Now, this is a really frustrating thing with intraoral scanners because I don't think many people understand why this happens. And there's a lot of theories. And here's another example, a little bit more of a color example. So you can see we're doing this crown down here. We take a bite scan and then we see all these intersections over here. And you're wondering, you know, why does the scanner do this? Why is there so many intersections? This is obviously not real life because the patient's teeth don't magically go through each other. There's a lot of theories, guys, why this happens. Um, prevailing theory is periodontal ligament. As we all know, our teeth move. Our teeth move when we bite down. And if you want to feel that, you can just put your finger on your canine, your upper canine, and then bite down really hard. You'll feel it move. So this is one of the reasons why people think this happens within trial scanners, is that there's this periodontal ligament movement, especially in patients who have very bad period. That's a whole different story. But in every day-to-day -day patients, any sort of movement, and you're capturing something static, and the software is just going to put it together. Now, thankfully, in this day and age, the software compensates for this. A lot of intraoral scanner software, including Medit, compensate for this because they can identify when there's an intersection and correct for it. And I think the first step into making sure this doesn't happen to you is just identifying it. And as I mentioned, inspect your scans. You should be turning them around and looking at them to make sure there's no significant interference like this. The other prevailing theory of why this happens is software algorithm. So basically, when you take a scan, you've got that one image, the software is now responsible for that alignment. Some software is better than others. Now, if I just show you what this looks like here, so the easiest way to inspect your scans is after you've taken a bite scan, just rotate your scan. And as you can see, you can see all this intersection, which immediately raises some red flags. So you can see on the side that we have scanned, which is down here. This is the side we've taken the bite scan. It looks okay, but then on the opposing side, you got all this intersection. And look, the reality is, guys, it's quite an easy fix in, in, in my point of view. I mean, this has been like this for the past five years with trial scanners. Again, some scanners better than others. And a lot of scanners put, put software in their scan, that in their scanner software. And they put AI, should I say, in their scanner software to counteract this. So how do you fix this? Uh, in my books, the first thing I would do is take bilateral bite scans. I mean, I'll show you this very clearly. So you can see we have this uh, very clear intersection here. And we took a bite scan on one side, as you can clearly see. Now, the good thing about the Medit software is that it allows you to capture multiple bites. Uh, Two off the bat, as you can see down there, but you can add as many bytes as you really want, up to, I believe, four or five. And so you can go to the other side now and retake the byte scan on the other side. And what you're going to see the Medit software do when you take two byte scans, and this happens automatically when you take two byte scans, is that it says optimizing mandibular maxillary and occlusal data. And what this software is doing is just looking at these two bite scans and ensuring the perfect bite. And so pretty easy fix in my point of view is that if you're getting a lot of intersections in your scans, A, should probably be taking full eye scans in the first place. And B, if you've taken a full eye scan and a bite scan only takes five to five, five to 10 seconds, there's really no excuse not to take two bite scans on each side. And then becomes a question, so there we are. We have the two byte scans, one on each side. Now, interestingly enough, because this was an ongoing thing with many users, Medit released an app, Medit Occlusion Analyzer. So when everything else has failed, you didn't check the scans and you let the patient go, this is the last option you have to correct this before you send it to the lab. Of course, you can keep playing with the manual alignment, but this is also a good opportunity if you have some questions or you're not 100% sure if the bite is correct. So when you start this app, immediately it gives you a report like this, automatically all generated by AI. And as you can see, this is what I was mentioning by the heat map, is that you can see that on one side over here, there's a lot of color. And on the other side, there's very little color. Now, this is going to be a really, really big issue for us if we're making a crown here, because if the lab matches this bite as we've set it, there's a good chance that the crown is high. 
And the other thing that it does is it gives you cute little intersections and all these tools to analyze the byte a little bit better. Do I do this? No, I don't do this every case. And really you should only do this, I would say, if you have a big concern, but it's good to have this tool in here. As you can see with these intersection lines, if you look in the right hand side, you can see there's clearly an intersection here. And that is obviously not how the patient's bite is. It also gives you some other cool views and more importantly, an opportunity to fix this. You can realign the bite. Now, if you're not comfortable doing something like this, I would just recommend you send it to your lab and inform them because the lab, I promise you, is more confident and experienced with fixing these issues because I'm sure they face it every single day.